Hello, and welcome to this episode of Grace Filled Plate TV. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to stop eating so much. <laughs> I know, right? Isn't that the question that we all want to know? What is the simple, straightforward, easy answer to fix our overeating problems? And as you're probably going to guess, this isn't going to be a one part solution. In today's episode, I'm going to go through the four areas of our lives that we need to be mindful of in order to stop eating so much, and then the solutions that we can apply to each of those areas. Now for each and every one of us, it's not going to be a one size fits all solution. You may have certain spots and places that need to be like mended and healed a little bit more or have some better skills to manage. And once we do that, then things start to move in a positive direction. But it's not ever going to be just one thing. It's going to be the combination of things that help you move forward and start to connect to your body's true physical needs. So you can start eating within the context of a hunger and fullness and have food take its rightful place in your life. <laughs> so let's get started. So the first area of your life that you want to be mindful of if you want to stop eating too much is the physical. Now this is the one that is going to come to mind initially and the one that we're going to be trying to manage probably first and foremost right out of the gate. It's important, but it doesn't suit the whole picture. So when we come into the physical realm of things, we're talking about things like hunger, fullness, like appetite, you know, desire would be more of an emotional piece that we'll talk about later, but here it's the physical need to eat. And one way to help your, you moderate the amount of food you eat with just physical cues is to pay attention to the hunger and fullness. Now, you probably already know this, right? But it's not an easy thing to do initially because if you've been on more than one diet, you've probably altered your perception of what it means to feel true hunger and true fullness. We tend to get onto the opposite or extreme end of the spectrum where hunger is extremely hungry and fullness is I'm stuffed so much that I need to undo my top button on my pants. That is not the true hunger and fullness that say a child would be motivated by. It's much more pleasant and it's not difficult to discern when you take time to pay attention to it. Starting with either one, hunger or fullness is a great way to enter into that practice. I know that they are two bookends on one habit, but a singular focus can make it a lot easier to narrow in on one. And as you work on one, the other will naturally become a little bit easier. The other thing that affects our eating in the physical realm would be our food choices. So certain foods, highly processed foods, are highly palatable. They have been engineered by highly paid scientists in order to trigger our brain at what is called the bliss point. This is where the sugar, fat, and salt all come together in a way that makes your brain <laughs> fire like the 4th of July. So it's no wonder when you eat that particular food that it feels like one is not enough. It's because someone paid a lot of money, figured out how to create that reaction in your brain. Now that doesn't mean that we have to swear off these kinds of foods forever just putting them in the context of our diet so that they are a part of it and not the central base of our plate is going to make it a lot easier to make moderate food choices. This means filling up most of your plate, right? So more than 50% with whole nourishing foods, including fats, carbohydrates, in the forms of starches and vegetables, proteins, um, fiber-rich foods. That way, these foods that are more palatable won't have quite an impact on your mind and on your blood sugar levels. It makes it a lot easier to moderate. Over practice, you can start to lessen the amount of processed foods that you consume, and that in of itself will make it so much easier to moderate your meal. And it doesn't mean tasteless food. You can use great spices and condiments and sauces and dressings, but having things that are based on whole God-made foods will put you at the advantage to listening to those hunger and fullness signals. All right, so that was number one. The second area that you're going to want to pay attention to if you want to stop eating too much is going to be the mental side of things. So this is the battlefield of the mind where a lot of the thinking happens where we can justify eating more than our bodies actually need. And so this is two-sided. Um, one side is preventative and the other side is in the heat of the moment, managing that piece of it. 
So prevention is always easier to do. Uh, it's not quite as intense and we don't get our emotional side in it as much. And this would be beginning to wash your mind with the truths of the scripture about what food is to you and the relationship that you want to have with food that you want to be modest, that you don't want to eat too much, that you want to allow it to nourish you and not become an idol in your life. The word is active, alive, living. You can wash your mind with the truth of God's word and expect it to change the way that you think. And that is the proactive way, the preventative way in order to change the mental side of things. In the moment, having a backup plan, right? So when uh, things don't go quite as planned, having a backup plan of scriptural truths that you can hang on can be really helpful. And also letting go of the all or nothing thinking that says, I already ate one, I might as well throw in the towel and have it all and start fresh tomorrow. That is a loss, a big loss on our end in a mental battle. We're going for a W, a win. And a win can be stopping midway, bite, binge, whatever it is, and going fresh and really committing to the Lord. Also mentally, the other part, we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit to where we were talking about the physical uh, factors. Mentally, when we make food choices that we enjoy, it will be easier to mentally move on and not eat so much. But also it does help when we make more nourishing food choices just sets our mind at a place where we're thinking clearly and we don't have that crazy reaction to the processed foods happening. So finding that balance of marrying your wants. Wow, I really could go for chocolate cake for dinner with your wisdom. Mm, I'm going to have some chicken and salad and a piece of chocolate cake can help you find the balance and help you stop eating too much. So we touched on the physical, the mental. Now we're going to get into the emotional side of things. And I know that you know the emotional side is probably a really big factor in going off the rails or even off track just a little bit with your eating. There's so much involved there. Things from stress, going to food for comfort, dealing with negative self-talk and going for sort of a reprieve or a break even from ourselves are all ways that food can come in in an emotional way in our lives. And what really is the best way to do is once again, preventative. This is giving yourself what you actually need. So it's now aside from any food urges, let's backtrack to the last time you ate more than you wanted to. Let's think about three hours before it happened. What was the mental state that you were in? Were you exhausted, tired, at the end of your willpower rope? Have you been managing a lot of different things, kids and jobs and carpools and household work, and your brain was just done? Or maybe you had a difficult conversation or a difficult interaction, or you perceived someone's, you know, unrelated, uh, you know, the way that they spoke to you or the way that they acted to you and you took it personally. What happened like three hours before that? Maybe nothing. Maybe it happened a little bit later. Think about two hours and then what's the track that led to the overeating? And were there any emotional needs that needed to be met? Did you need some comfort and a reminder that the Holy Spirit is the comforter and that even if you know, relationships are rocky, that you can do your part and find your peace and security in Christ. Did you need to step aside from all the chaos and just go on the back porch and get alone with the Lord in prayer and, and meet that need for stress relief in a way that would be helpful? See, we so often we're busy, 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 go, go, go. By the time we get to the point where we are emotionally exhausted, it feels too late. And while it's never too late, there's no temptation that has overtaken us that is such as common to man, it's a lot easier to meet those needs ahead of time. And when you're in the moment and you're faced with an emotional trigger to eat too much, I want you to go and set the timer for three minutes. Now, if you're resistant to three minutes, one of two things, go for less time, or I want you to remind yourself that you can in fact continue to eat after the three minutes have passed. But we want to take this little block of time and set it aside and let it be an experiment. <laughs> Put yourself in an observation room and step outside of yourself and see what is going on in the moment. What do you actually need? What's going on? 
What are you thinking? What are you feeling physically, mentally, emotionally? Like be a detective and really dig in. Once again, reminding yourself that you can still eat if you want to. The goal of this exercise is not to not eat. The goal is to learn a little bit more about yourself and how you're wired and how you've learned to rely on food to meet emotional needs. Then jot it down, take notes, and begin to tally information about how you need to be ministered to in a way that doesn't involve food. If you see that you're constantly going to food for stress relief, then let's focus on finding stress relief in the Lord. Let's dig into stress versus on stress. Maybe you find a great Christian book that helps you manage those worries. We're going to meet the emotional needs ahead of time, but sometimes you got to figure things out in the minute and that is okay. All right, so the fourth thing, and really the most important, but I saved the best for last here, to help you stop eating so much is addressing the spiritual needs. So often when I talk to women, um, they, they're, they're in a, in a f- frazzled state, things have been going rough, and then through our conversation, they realize that maybe something like their quiet time or their prayer time has slipped. Life got in the way, and I know I do it. I get up early and I'll start checking email and then all of a sudden I have no time for the Lord. By reprioritizing our spiritual practices and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we know that everything else will be added unto us. There's the 80-20 rule that when you do the 20%, the 80% tends to take care of itself. Well, our 20% is really seeking God. What does he have for us today? How can I be filled? And then he will make you more efficient, direct your paths, help you say no to certain things, fill up that space for comfort or managing stress where you would have blown a half an hour roaming the refrigerator anyways. (laughs) Seeking first the kingdom, filling up with his word, whatever that looks like is going to be invaluable. It could be listening to praise music on a walk Sometimes I'll watch a sermon on our smart TV while riding the exercise bike, talking to friends, praying through things, and of course, sitting down and reading a Bible study. All of those things work, but we will want to pay attention to is what, how does the outcome change the rest of the day? And can we go into that activity with the faith that this is going to be what we need to soothe our spirits and to make the rest of the day go better? So there we have it. We have our four part way to address eating too much. If you find that you're eating more than you would like, you can start by looking at the physical, tuning into hunger and fullness or what you're eating, right? Because that can affect how easy it is to stop a little bit sooner. We can look at the mental. Are your thoughts making it harder for you to stop eating? Are there sabotaging thoughts that are happening that you can start killing with the word of God right now, preventatively, maybe in your quiet time in the morning? Then we look at the emotional things. How can you fill up your emotional tank so that when it gets to the heat of the moment, you have enough left in you to say, no thanks, I'm going to the Lord instead. And finally, spiritual. Keep your spirit filled, full with the goodness of God, the peace that surpasses understanding so that you can say no to your flesh and walk in the power that he has given you. All right, so pick one or two things to work on. Keep it small. And sow that seed of self-control and watch God show up on your behalf. Thank you, sister. I am glad you're here and I look forward to hearing how it goes for you.